going on everyone? It's Nina Infinity. Welcome back to my channel or if you're new here, welcome to the channel. Please be sure to subscribe and hit the little notification bell. And if you like the content, make sure you smash the like button, share the video, comment, 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 all that good stuff. So PayPal's in the news and you might be wondering why. And the reason for that is because on October 8th, PayPal put out an update of its terms of use where they claimed that they were going to be fining people $2,500 if they deemed that the person was spreading misinformation. This is a really heavy handed approach to what is the fight against information war. And it didn't go unnoticed because many went on Twitter and put PayPal on blast about what was going on. And PayPal immediately backpedaled and claimed that it was just all a giant mistake. Ironically though, it was PayPal that was spreading misinformation. It's interesting to note that PayPal used to be a company that wanted to help you achieve financial independence from government controlled banks. And they even hoped to become an independent form of money. But as the saying goes, if you can't beat them, join them. And that's exactly what PayPal ended up doing they are part of the beast. And their shady business practices have become highlighted by several instances just last month in September of 2022, where they blocked several important accounts in the UK, including Troy Young's personal account, the Free Speech Union, and the Daily Skeptic, claiming that they were spreading misinformation. These sites are sites that are questioning the narrative of the establishment and have to be silenced at all costs by big tech. Another account that was blocked by PayPal and Venmo for violating terms of service was Gays Against Groomers, who claimed that Venmo and PayPal shut down their accounts for violating user agreements. Gays Against Groomers is a group that's trying to stop the trend of indoctrinating, sexualizing, and medicinalizing children under the guise of the LGBTQ+. PayPal also withheld Eric July's money in the sum of $1.2 million from the very successful sales of his comic book, I Sum Number no. 1. He goes into all of that on his channel, so you want to make sure to check that out. Now, PayPal's bleeding clients, and rightly so, so they're trying to put a stop to that by crying foul and claiming that this was all a terrible mistake. They put out a notice saying, an AUP notice recently went out in error, including incorrect information, a spokesperson told the Epoch Times. PayPal is not finding people for misinformation, and this language was never intended to be inserted in our policy. But we all know this was no mistake. They got caught with their hands in the cookie jar in 4K, which caused people to make noise on Twitter. And in order to stop the hemorrhaging and course correct, they had to come out with this lame ass excuse of I didn't do it. But this in itself is of great concern to me to know that such a shady company deemed themselves so powerful that they can do whatever they want whenever they want with our essential rights, privacies and liberties are always hanging in the balance on some Twitter based protest and whether people will make enough noise to make it come to light. How many companies get away with this kind of stuff on a daily basis and we just don't hear about it because it never makes it to Twitter? We all know that something as legally and institutionally critical as acceptable use of policy would have to go through legal hurdles, rights and rewrites of legal mumbo jumbo that PayPal pays their lawyers big money to write. This change clearly was approved at the top, at the highest levels. And I think PayPal had every intention of implementing this practice of finding people $2,500 for what they deem to be misinformation. Who are they, by the way? Who is deciding what is and what isn't misinformation? That's a rhetorical question, because we all know that it's government and establishment big tech companies like Google, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, etc., etc. I found the Washington Compost story covering this particularly interesting. They wrote, PayPal is facing blowback after proposing rules that would have allowed it to fine users $2,500 for promoting misinformation which the online payment service has since called an error. Over the weekend, several conservative outlets reported that the tech company updated its terms of agreement, under which PayPal can levy fines against users for violating to include the sending, posting, or publication of messages, content, 
or materials that promotes misinformation. What an interesting use of language. They want to make sure to point out to you that the reason that PayPal was caught was because of the conservative outlets pointed this out, which sparked an uproar online. This is how the Washington Compost will present this news to you, as in PayPal only got caught because of those righties, aka MAGA Republicans. The reason that they use this term is so that they can signal boost to their readers that this is the group that is to be judged as wrong, without question. Even the former president of PayPal, David Marcus, wrote on Twitter, It's hard for me to openly criticize a company I used to love and gave so much to. But PayPal's new AUP goes against everything I believe in. A private company now gets to decide to take your money if you say something they disagree with? Insanity. Elon Musk liked the tweet. Then Brendan Carr, former commissioner of the Federal Communications Commission, weighed in saying, Orwellian PayPal reserves the right to take your money if you post a message that PayPal decides is misinformation. This is why it is so vital that state and federal legislatures pass laws that prohibit discrimination by tech companies and protect free speech. We know now exactly what big tech companies mean by misinformation. They mean anything that questions the dictates that's handed down from the government currently in the form of the Biden administration and the World Economic Forum. From COVID, to climate change, to food shortages, to the recession, to policies concerning gender identity and CRT, anything, anything that questions the mainstream narrative is considered misinformation and must be silenced. This is the dark truth of the Orwellian reality that the left has created and wants to maintain. The war on information and free speech is intensifying daily. And this little victory over PayPal might seem sweet, but it's going to be short-lived if these companies are allowed to get away with these dodgy practices. At least we know companies like PayPal still have to depend on their customers in order to function. They have to keep daddy government happy, but they also have to answer to their clients and shareholders. Still, the course is very clearly laid that the next step in the war and the rise of a totalitarian and tyrannical government to take its total hold over the people is to control the ability to move money, allowing you to earn an income that will one day be dependent on your social credit score and your right think. Like something out of 1984 or Black Mirror or any dystopian novel or book or whatever that you've read or watched. We've already seen this somewhat implemented in places like China where the CCP used digital apps to turn on or off people's ability to speak, associate, travel, and move money. We even saw it in Canada when the government invaded the bank accounts of the trucker convoy participants and even jailed them for peacefully protesting government use of extreme Orwellian measures. I think it's interesting to note that the PayPal situation showed their hand and exposed a much deeper and scarier plan that the Biden administration intends to create a new central bank digital currency, programmable money that would allow the establishment and the ruling elite to cut off your means to live if they find you guilty of wrong things. Civil discourse and common sense seem to be a thing of the past, as now one side of the aisle, mainly the left, is wanting to deplatform you and cancel you and impede your livelihood and the ability to feed your family. Only time will tell if the American people will let this go on. What is your opinion on all of this? Leave your comments down below and let's try and have a conversation while we're still allowed to, that is. And if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to smash the like, share the video, and subscribe if you're new here. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye!